Hey y'all, I'm Noel G. Welcome back to my channel. Now I got a few requests for how my electrical system works, specifically how my alternator charging is set up. So I'll go ahead and show that for you today. And this is exciting because I actually had this done professionally. So you can see exactly what a professional install looks like. And they did one thing that I think would make this easier if you're going to do this on your own. And the system has worked great. I've used it for all my off-grid travels when I went down from Mexico all the way to Alaska. Had it for over a year. It's powered everything inside my, my camper from my fridge to my microwave and everything I need. So if you feel like I've earned your support, please subscribe down below or join my Patreon. With that, I can pop the hood and get started. Give the people what they want. All right, so I'll go ahead and just start the battery and go step by step. All right, so here's the positive battery terminal of my vehicle. That flips open. This comes off. And to give you a general layout, you can ignore these two terminals. Those go to my electrical hookups for my winch in the front and the back. This post comes down and has two wires coming off of it. And then you see this one back here is actually gonna run back over to this junction over here. All right, and so this junction actually is a fuse box and this fuse runs over to this wire, which I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, runs over to the alternator. So it's, and then this one goes over to, this one down below runs over to the main fuse box for the whole vehicle. So all that, as far as I know, was already installed on the vehicle. So that's how it started. So starting here is what they, is the work that they did. So they put it, as you can see, there's a fuse in between here. They put it on the battery side of the fuse. This goes directly to the alternator. So this first wire starts where their work started. And this main channel, which you can see, runs across here is the positive wire running to essentially the battery and through this hookup is connected to the alternator. There's got a fuse right here and this is a 150 amp fuse and this is what was cool about what they did. They actually used a power wiring kit. It came with four gauge wire. It's 100% oxygen free copper, pre-terminated lugs on one end so that's nice with a couple more lugs. So it comes with most of what you're gonna need to get the job done and it includes the fuse holder and the fuse. So that's hooked up here. And part of what makes it nice, they covered the four gauge wire with split loom to protect it from the heat and dust and corrosion, as well as it zip tied nicely. It's secured nice and neat, riding right underneath the hood. So then it comes across here, this line is coming through here and it's gonna enter into my solenoid. This is a 200 amp continuous duty solenoid. I'll link to the exact one in the description below. So the positive coming from the alternator slash battery comes in right here. There's going to be a total of four connections on the solenoid. And one of the things that seems tricky is finding a way to mount the solenoid and they put it on the underside of this bracket here. It's screwed and bolted here. All right, so coming in is this big four gauge wire that's coming from the battery slash alternator to this terminal. And this other big terminal is gonna be another four gauge wire with the power going out. And the other two smaller terminals with the smaller wires on this solenoid, the top one is gonna be the ground wire and the bottom one's gonna go to an ignition source. It's hard to see because it's a little dusty, but this top wire is black and this bottom one, the heat shrink is black, but the rest of the wire is red just for identification purposes. And then it's a little hard to see, so you have to take my word for it, but this small black loom is those two wires going through the firewall here and the bigger black loom is the big four, -wage, four gauge wire going through the firewall here and that's how they're gonna go inside the cab. And then coming in through the driver's side door, down under here, you can see 
this is that same four gauge red wire coming out. It comes through here. They actually lifted up these running boards and ran it down under here. And it's gonna come back to here where my blue eddy setup is. Additionally, the ignition wire is gonna come in through there and I believe they just put it into here to a fuse, tapped it into a fuse that is only on when the car is on and is off when the truck is off. And that way, that signals to the solenoid to only run when the truck is on. And then the ground wire, I'm not totally sure about, but as far as I know, they grounded it somewhere in there to the chassis. Now coming back inside here is gonna be my Blue Eddy AC200P. I'll go ahead and move that out of the way since I'm a man of the people, so you can get a good look of how everything looks behind it. All right, so here we are where the Blue Eddy used to be and everything's tucked in nice and neat. So behind it, this is a Beztec 500 watt pure sine wave inverter. And this red terminal on top is gonna be that four gauge wire coming through from the engine bay connected there. And then the black terminal below it, this one down here, is also gonna be a four gauge wire that's also included in that power wiring kit. And that's gonna be grounded to the vehicle. And so to explain what I'm going for here, here's my Blue Eddy. If you see on the side, it, this is what's really cool about this unit, is it's able to receive two input sources at the same time. So on this one, that's where I'll connect the power brick. And this one accepts the solar. So I can connect the solar at the same time that I have the house power brick attached and that's gonna connect to my inverter. So in this case, it's around a 400 or 400 something watt power brick, which you have to keep in mind that inverters are not 100% efficiency. They're roughly a decent one, 85 to 90%. So some a power brick that's about 400 watts output is gonna take a little bit less than 500 watts of total input. So this inverter is gonna be fine to power that. So just make sure you size your inverter appropriately for your size power brick. So this power brick the plug comes out here and is actually then plugged into the inverter right there. And then, all right, so then coming back around to the driver's side rear door, you can see where I have access to these hookups. And on this side is where I'll hook in the solar that's in there and then right here plug in the power brick all right so fortunately I'm at 96 percent honestly I'm usually at hundred percent but I'll go ahead and turn on the vehicle so you can see the charge coming in And there you go. After a few seconds of the vehicle running, it kicks on and we're at 408 watts coming in from the adapter. All right, well that's it. Thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you got something out of it. I'll give a shout out to Houston Car Stereo. They're the ones who actually did the work. I totally recommend them if you're in the greater Houston area. This is not paid or sponsored or anything like that. I was just really happy with their work. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. Testing, testing with microphone. Testing one, two, three. Testing, testing one, two, three. Testing, testing one, two, three. Testing, testing, testing one, two, three. Testing.